I find exciting working here because uh, I have the possibility of uh, investigating the polarized emission coming from powerful AGN jets with the highest possible resolution and frequency available nowadays. I go to Apex, to the Apex telescope in Chile, working at 5,000 meters. It's a challenge getting everything ready for this expedition, uh, working under tough conditions. It's a nice combination of nature and high tech. So I think one of the things I find fascinating about working uh, in VLBI uh, is that it brings us face to face with some of the most extreme plasma physics in the universe. The jets from these black holes vary on time scales of months to even days. VLBI is such a great technique. It allows the highest resolution in astronomy and we can investigate astrophysical phenomena not possible in other wavelength regimes or with other techniques. So we can study active galactic nuclei, so active black holes, and their jets in greatest detail. So a friend of mine once said that if you wanted to see the world in the 19th century, you should have joined the Marine, and in the 20th century, you should have joined the VLBI effort. When I was appointed to the Max Planck Society more than 20 years ago, I decided early on that the field or the direction I wanted to go for most was the development of uh, VLBI technologies to higher frequencies. I thought that was important at the time because we had studied uh, active galactic nuclei with high resolution at centimeter wavelengths and it was clear that many of the pressing astrophysical questions of the time could only be answered by pushing the resolution limit beyond the ceiling that we had had until then. Uh, the MPI for radio astronomy was fairly early in the game of millimeter VOBI. Um, we started in 1984 with a, a long millimeter wavelength observation at seven millimeters, uh, which is fairly easy by today's standards. So we set out to continue on a path that many colleagues here had uh, chosen for a while, and we developed both our telescope capabilities, but also the recording and correlator cap capabilities to uh, ensure and enable observations first at seven millimeters, but then later on at three millimeters, and ultimately now at one millimeters. Well, we have been working for millimeter VLBI for decades now. That is, we implemented millimeter VLBI equipment on telescopes. We upgraded it continuously. And uh, we have uh, implemented a correlator for decades, different, different correlators to analyze the data. Our group is also involved in the uh, technical developments, that is, the equipment needed for doing VLBI. Uh, namely the DVB-C2 and DVB-C3 backends, and they became the workhorses of the VLBI technology in general nowadays on the planet. But we didn't stop with the GMVA work, because obviously there's a quest for even higher resolution that can only be obtained at uh, going to yet higher uh, frequencies, shorter wavelengths, or to go into space. And so from the very beginning, this group was uh, instrumental, was a key player in the development of what is now known as the Event Horizon Telescope. We are also very much involved in the EHT efforts. Uh, we are equipping uh, two of the participating telescopes for VLBI, which is the Pico Veleta Telescope in southern Spain and the Apex Telescope in Chile, close to Alma. Uh, we also support the NOEMA telescope, which will join the network um, very shortly. Millimeter VLBI provides the sharpest images in the universe, and so we can see the finest details, like the shadow of the black hole. One other good example uh, for the imaging of an AGN is the uh, very famous radio source M87, which is at the center of the Virgo cluster. That source is 16 megaparsecs away, and it has a 6 billion solar mass black hole at its center. And uh, we imaged that source with the GMVA repeatedly between 2000 and 2015. 
uh, we can see that the jet still is very, very tiny and bright. So we better understand now that, at least for this source, we know that jets are formed more or less directly by the black hole and not so much by the accretion disk. Well, if we now go to the next shorter wavelength, so going from the 3 mm VBI image, which shows the jet formation, down to 1 mm, we get about three times higher angular resolution, which practically means that we can probe uh, the environment of the black hole with a resolution which is high enough to see the event horizon. And in fact, it has turned out, and that is extremely fascinating, that at the foot point of the jet of M87, we now see a ring-like structure which outlines this event horizon. Seeing the image of the shadow of the black hole was just shocking. It was there. It should be there and it's there. I've heard some people say that with this VLBI technology, especially the technology at millimeter wavelengths, we have sort of reached the end of the development path. I think that's not true. I think instead of being at the end of a chapter, we're at the beginning of perhaps a golden chapter of uh, uh, astronomy, VLBI work. Together with other areas, we are making breakthrough discoveries, but basically because we're at a point where we can, in a much more meaningful way, put together theoretical work with our observational results. So I think we're at the beginning of a very fruitful phase uh, that will last a good number of years.